Hello, welcome to the Comic Book Commentary. I'm Bo Leidig, and this week we're going to be talking about a book series that we haven't had a video about on the channel in a long time, mostly because I just lose track of time when I'm busy. It's pit number four, so let's zoom in and take a closer look. First published in April of 1994, we can see here on the cover Pitt going face to face with his father, Zoivod. Uh, we left off, of course, in the last issue where Zoivod had appeared and taken Timmy hostage, demanding that Pitt fight him. And this is the issue where we see the two of them go toe to toe in a battle to save Timmy and also fight for some other things once we get inside this book. Story Art Dale Keown. Script, Brian Houghton. Colors, Joe Chiodo. Lettering, Chris Eliopoulos. Color separations, Ollie Optics. Logo, Chance Wolf. Film output, Kello Graphics. Or perhaps Kellographics, I'm not really sure. On the first page, we can see here that everything picks up exactly where it left off. We see Zoivod holding Timmy in his evil clutches, shouting that he wants Pitt to appear before him so that the two of them can do battle. He's here to not only take care of his uh, wayward son, but also take care of the Chakran child, a.k.a. Uh, Jerob, who is a consciousness living within the mind of Pitt. Uh, I don't know what Dale Keown was doing in the two-month time span between when issue number three came out and this issue came out. But I know what he wasn't doing, and it was drawing backgrounds. As you can see right here, the background of this is just, you know, monochromatic color with some line work. And that's a common theme that is going to be throughout this entire book, and I'm not really a big fan of it, as you're going to find out. We see here that Zoivod is still connected to the rock monster bounty hunter alien that he burst out of as he dangles Timmy in front of the line of police officers who all have their guns drawn pointed at him. Uh, Timmy's grandfather is doing his best to try and break free of the policeman's grasp. He wants to save his grandson. And Zoivod says that, you know, it's not going to be long now. He can feel his presence. The officers don't know what Zoivod's talking about, but they plead with him to let the boy go and give himself up, telling him he's surrounded. But Zoivod states there's only one who can save Timmy now. The police officers seem confused by this, but they don't notice the large silhouette that is slowly approaching behind them until he says, it's me, and they turn around quite surprised to see something that they weren't expecting. We then get this two-page vertical, thanks a lot, Dale, splash of Pitt pushing his way through the police officers as he shouts, Zoivod, release the boy now. Uh, this is actually a really cool shot, despite the fact that it is on the vertical orientation. Uh, again, you know, this panel here, no backgrounds. This panel does have a background. Unfortunately, it's completely silhouetted trees. Like, there's no detail to it. And this is also a theme that kind of continues throughout the book of, you know, many of the panels that do have backgrounds don't have very detailed ones. Uh, but overall, I can't complain too much. This is a really cool shot. And it shows, you know, just exactly how massive Pitt is by comparison to normal human beings. As Zoivod is approached by Pitt, he states that I can sense the child of future light within your subconscious. And in order to kill that child, he's going to have to destroy Pitt as well. Pitt says, very well, let's get on with it. At this point, Zoivod makes his move and tosses Timmy through the air. Uh, Pitt decides that he has to save him as he leaps from the ground with the police officers behind him, shouting Timmy as he gets closer to him in midair and grabs the young Timmy, saving him from certain doom. He also at, then points, or at that point says, Jerob, are you with me? Jerob says, yes, and Zoivod seems just as ruthless as ever. Uh, before they can land, however, Zoivod picks up a telephone pole straight out of the ground and throws it at Pitt like a javelin, hitting him square in the back. At this point, Pitt decides that he has to get Timmy to safety and even states that he wants to retreat in order to do so. However, Jerob says that that's a terrible plan because Zoivod will just hunt them down no matter where they go and Timmy is going to be in danger until they deal with this. At this point, Pitt crashes into the nearby tool shed where he tries to regather his plan of attack. Uh, now, despite the fact that only like half the panels on these two pages have backgrounds, 
These two pages have more backgrounds than most of the pages throughout this book, and you will notice that, generally speaking, Dale's only drawing backgrounds on pages where it's absolutely necessary. Like, for instance, you can see he does it here where Pitt is leaping from the ground, and also here where it's showing Zoivod throwing Timmy, but at a downward angle, so you see the ground. Here's the truck that he's on. Uh, you can also see as Pitt is leaping forward to the tool shed, you can see the ground and the surrounding trees. But any time where he's in midair or they're showing it from an upward angle, it's literally no backgrounds. It's just colors and line work. With Timmy out of the line of fire, the police decide to completely open up on Zoiva, just unloading all of their magazines onto him, hitting him in the face. But as you can see, the bullets are doing no damage. They're just bouncing right off of him. And it's at this point Zoiva decides to grow some legs and start walking towards the police who notice that he's getting closer, but continue their assault. Inside of the tool shed, we see that Pitt is cradling Timmy in his hands, afraid that Timmy may be dead. However, Jareb tells him that he is still alive, but just barely because Zoivod was siphoning his life force energy. Pitt asks if there's any way to save him, and Jareb tells him that he can if he transfers his consciousness into Timmy. Uh, Pitt tells him to go ahead and do it, as we see here, the energy coming out of Pitt's eyes and into Timmy's. Uh, at this point, Jareb tells Pitt that it is his consciousness that Zoivon is after, and if he finds out that he's been transferred into Timmy, he's going to come after Timmy once again, and that Pitt needs to buy some time so that he can heal Timmy. Pitt tells him he's going to take care of Zoivon as he brings out his claws and looks very menacingly that, like, he's going to, you know, start to attack his father. Also, again, no backgrounds except for like one. There's one panel with a background and only because he had to to illustrate that they were indoors, which he didn't even do on this page. Pitt is still inside the tool shed, but it's just jet black behind him. Thanks a lot, Dale. Way to really give it your A game. Meanwhile, back at the battle, we see that Zoivod has completely freed himself from the corpse of the dead bounty hunter and is now slowly approaching the police line, getting ready to unleash an attack, stating that these mere mortals are no match for him. Uh, the officers realize something's happening as all of, their, all of their hats start to blow off, and they're being approached from behind by a familiar face. At this point, Zoivod unleashes his attack, which doesn't kill any of the officers, surprisingly, but it does send them all flying through the air except for one who we've seen before. Of course, this is Detective Bobby Harris, who states that it's okay, boys, I've got this covered. She's also armed to the teeth with some pretty impressive sci-fi laser guns. Uh, Zoivod seems a little bit impressed by her, stating that she does seem to possess powers that far surpass, or far surpass the rest of the humans he's been dealing with. She then states that her name is Ray Key, and says that the female in front of him is about to kick his butt as she pulls the trigger and unleashes a blast from her crazy sci-fi space gun. Uh, kind of surprising to, you know, find out that Bobby Harris has a different name altogether. However, she has been a mysterious character up until this, po up until this point, showing that she does have levels of super strength and durability that are still not explained, and we also don't know where she got all this weaponry from or who she's actually working for, but those are mysteries that are going to be answered in the future. The shots connect square into the torso and groin of Zoivod. However, they do basically no damage as he starts to make his counteroffensive against Reiki, aka Detective Harris, lunging forward with one of his hands and grabbing her around the waist, stating that while his mental powers may not work on her, he's more than capable of crushing the life out of her with his bare hands. As he believes he's won this battle, he is suddenly caught off guard when none other than Pitt explodes out of the ground from behind him, apparently having tunneled through the earth from the tool shed to basically <laughs> sneak attack his father. He leaps up out of the ground, rocks and debris and dirt flying everywhere. He states, Zoivod, let's do this. Uh, at this point, Zoivod throws Detective Harris away, not even really caring about her anymore, and stating that he underestimated Pitt's resourcefulness. Also, two full pages without a single background in any of the panels. Pitt wastes no time in beginning his assault as we see him 
strike his father across the face with his claws and then kick him and then hit him with the reverse double axe handle and then smash his head into the ground, all the while stating that, you know, as his creator, Zoivod enslaved him and forced him to do his bidding and kept him hidden in a shroud of darkness, Pitt's unleashing a furious attack, but also has quite a bit of unresolved anger toward his father. Also, two more pages without a single background in any of the panels. That's four in a row, folks. We then see that Pitt has Zoivod pinned to the ground as he states, you know, I'm free now, no longer will I return to do your dark bidding, and you're not going to enslave me again. At this point, however, Zoivod starts his counterattack and states to Pitt, you know, this isn't about recapturing you and bringing you back to the fold. This is about killing you and destroying Jareb, the child of future light, who is the only being that threatens my existence. He grabs Pitt and brings him close as we see his eyes charge up with some sort of power. However, at this point, Zoivod realizes that Jareb's consciousness is no longer residing within Pitt's mind as he unleashes some sort of mental attack on Pitt, which blasts Pitt back through the air, shrieking in pain. And Zoivod states, you know, where is the Chakran child? I want him. And you can tell he's pretty angry. Also, two more pages without a single background. That's six in a row. Six full pages of a comic book without a single background drawn. Awesome. We then see that Zoivod has Pitt down on the ground in his clutches. Uh, this kind of illustrates that while Pitt is a very much a match for Zoivod physically, he is incapable of standing up to Zoivod's mental attacks and is going to have trouble dealing with him if this continues. However, Zoivod states, I want to know where Jareb is, and thankfully for Pitt, there's a small voice from behind Zoivod that says right here as we see that he's been snuck up on by Timmy, who states, you know, leave my friend alone. At this point, we see Timmy with his head down and Zoivod realizes that Jareb's consciousness is residing within Timmy. Timmy then looks up with his eyes glowing with power and states, you're not very nice and I don't like you, which is... Kind of funny illustrating that while Jareb is within Timmy, Timmy still has the consciousness of a young child. At this point, Zoivod screeches and states that he's too late as we see that Timmy starts his assault, which apparently involves exploding Zoivod's body from the inside, which is a pretty ruthless way to attack. Also, we got two background panels in a row. Wow, you're spoiling us, Dale. Uh, seriously though, like, again, this is kind of what I alluded to before. He had to draw a background here because of the angle and this one he didn't really, but it makes more sense. But again, he's only drawing backgrounds when he absolutely has to for the sake of the story, because it would make no sense otherwise. As Jareb continues to unleash his attack on Zoivat, we see that the explosions continue blowing off all of his limbs and the final attack decapitating him, sending all of his body parts falling to the ground in a heap, and Timmy standing over him staying, stating, never come back. However, at this point, Timmy collapses uh, from the exertion of using the powers, his grandfather running to his aid, stating, Timmy, how on earth did you kill that thing? However, Pitt corrects him, stating that Zoivod cannot be killed. Uh, while they have been able to destroy this physical form, his life force exists in another place, and that now that Timmy has merged with the Child of Light, he will live. However, Timmy's grandfather is pretty upset about everything that's transpired and, you know, quickly snaps at Pitt, stating, you know, no thanks to you. This is all your fault. Everything that's come upon me and my grandson is your doing, and, you know, you've got a lot to answer for. Uh, Pitt, however, starts to argue with Timmy's grandfather, stating, you know, you fail to understand the magnitude of the situation. However, he's interrupted by Detective Harris, who states that she believes that Timmy's grandfather fully understands the magnitude, and she does as well, and she is wanting to know more about what's going on and plans on bringing Pitt into the station for an interrogation as she holds him at gunpoint. I do find it funny that she believes that her space-age laser gun is going to do anything to Pitt after she's already seen it did literally nothing to Zoivod. Also, Look here, one and two panels with a background. How spoiled are we? It must be our birthdays. 
Pitt then picks up the head of Zoivod and states that he will not be accompanying Detective Harris back to the station. She then states, I don't know where you're from, but here we have rules to follow. At this point, Pitt simply turns his back on her, gathers up the rest of Zoivod's body parts, and simply states, so shoot me, as he walks off into the woods and the rest of them look on. Uh, again, we kind of got some backgrounds here with some silhouetted trees a little bit, but not so much. Uh, we then get an advertisement for Bowen Board as uh, they're advertising some prints of Pitt, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is a good place as any to advertise this stuff. Prints of uh, Pitt number two and of Pitt number three. Um, you know, they're not terribly expensive for the time. Uh, it's kind of cool that they're offering this. I probably would have been tempted to try and order some of these had I been in the market for this kind of thing back then, which unfortunately I wasn't. And who knows how many of these prints actually exist now, but if I came across one, I'd be very tempted to buy it. We then enter the letter portion of the book, which is called Letter Rip. That's kind of funny. And uh, this is standard, you know, fans writing in letters, but also sending in some artwork, which Dale was kind enough to print uh, in colors in some case. Uh, in some cases, we see this one here is in full color. This one, of course, in black and white. Uh, but I always appreciate when creators do this and allow uh, fans to have their artwork printed in a nationally syndicated book. That's always a cool thing for readers to have. We then see the following two pages of the letter section. Again, two more pieces of artwork published from fans, which again is pretty cool. There were only two letters in this month's issue that really stood out to me. One where a reader wrote in complaining about how pit number three had the Crash of Souls uh, little weird mini story at the end. Uh, he felt like he was ripped off because uh, that issue only had 19 pages. And he stated, you know, I didn't pay nearly $2, kind of funny to remember when comic books were that cheap, to, you know, not get a full issue of Pit. And I understand his complaint there, though I admittedly thought Crash of Souls was awesome, uh, despite the fact that, you know, I had no idea really what it was or what I was looking at. I still thought it was a really cool story and I liked it. Um, I do understand the complaint of, you know, you paid for a full issue of Pit and you didn't get one. Um... But at the same time, you know, Dale kind of makes the argument, hey, pit number two had 28 pages. So that's a total of 47 pages between the two. 22 is kind of the norm. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, it seems like the readers kind of splitting hairs on some of this stuff. But again, it's not a completely invalid criticism. The other letter that stood out to me more than anyone was the one where someone asked how exactly Zoivod had, was able to pop out of the chest of the dead rock monster alien bounty hunter, at which point Dale states that it was because Zoivod was hiding inside of him the entire time, which is an enormous plot hole. That doesn't make any sense in, t in terms of like the way that the story played out, because if you'll recall, Pitt defeated those bounty hunters and was injured in the process. And then after the fight was over, he left at which point, Zoivod could have just burst out of this thing at any time and attacked Pitt when he was already injured, rather than waiting until Pitt left, then bursting out of the monster, then taking Timmy hostage, and then trying to lure Pitt back to the scene of the crime. Why would you go to all those extra steps? It would have been way more, you know, poignant to just attack Pitt when you had the opportunity in the first place. This is... It makes no sense from a narrative standpoint that, T that Dale would do this. It was a gigantic plot hole, and I don't think he thought that through when he answered that fan's letter. On the next page, we get an ad for these cool pit watches. There were only 500 of these made, and I would love to own one. Unfortunately, 30 years after the fact, it is hard to come by these watches and even harder to come by them in working order. Uh, I've seen them on eBay once in a while, but generally they don't work anymore. They're just being sold as kind of like, you know, cool little collectible oddities. Uh, originally they retailed for $80 and I can't remember specifically, but I want to say they were made by Fossil if memory serves. I could be wrong about that. And if I am, go ahead and say something about it in the comment section. I seem to remember though that it was Fossil that was producing these. Uh, we then get an advertisement for Newman number two featuring girth. 
who I'm sure is nothing at all like the Blob from X-Men. Uh, I haven't made any videos as of recording this video on New Men because I only have a few issues of it. I'm trying to get a few more before I start getting into that, but I promise in the future at some point there will be videos made on New Men. We then see an advertisement for Gen 13. If you'd like to know more about Gen 13, you can check out my Gen 13 playlist. And then we get an advertisement for the Pact number two, which is the Pact versus Youngblood. I don't know if I have any issues of the Pact. I'll have to really dig through my collection to see. However, I definitely have issues of Youngblood, and if you'd like to know more about Youngblood, you can check out my Youngblood playlist. On the final page of the book, we get an advertisement for Cyberforce. This specifically for the ongoing series. Uh, as of the recording of this video, I've only just finished uh, the videos on the original Cyberforce miniseries, but I will start getting into the ongoing series eventually. If you'd like to know more about all of that, you can check it out in my Cyberforce playlist. And on the reverse inside cover, we get an advertisement for the Violator miniseries. Now, if you'd like to know more about the Violator miniseries, you can check out all three of my videos on that miniseries in my Spawn miniseries playlist. And that was pit number four. Obviously, I have some complaints about this issue, most notably the lack of backgrounds throughout most of the issue. Uh, and, that, you know, that wouldn't bother me so much were it not for the fact that Dale Keown is an artist I really like and think is very talented. And Pitt is a character in a book I really like. And I just don't like it when I see an artist, you know, cutting corners and taking shortcuts, especially when they took an extra month to get this issue out. And by the way, at the end of the letter section, he even states that issue number five wasn't going to come out until June of 94, which is, again, another two-month gap between issues. Like, I get it, man. Like, you're busy and you're starting a company from scratch and all this, but the idea that you're taking all this extra time and then on top of it, still taking these shortcuts, I find a little unacceptable. There's also the whole plot hole issue that he inadvertently, I guess, stated in the letter section where, you know, Zoivod appearing when he did the way that he did doesn't make any sense in the context of the story. But then again, you know, maybe I'm just splitting hairs and looking too deeply into it. Also, I did kind of chuckle to myself when I was reading this issue that, for as much as I stated during the Strike Force number one video that I thought Death's Angel was kind of the most extreme edgelord supervillain that, you know, Image Comics from the 90s could have offered. I'll tell you what, Zoivod's given him a run for his money. He's literally like a giant skeleton monster guy covered in spikes with giant claw hands. I mean, he's literally just like ultra edgelord alien monster. But then again... These are all just my opinions. Your opinions may differ. Perhaps you weren't bothered at all by the lack of backgrounds. Maybe you think that it makes perfect sense that Zoivod would have let Pitt escape, only, escape the battle only to lure him back at a later time. Uh, and if that's the case, it's fine, because everybody's entitled to their own opinions. If you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.